how to handle partly done equivalent fractions. To be able to do this kind of problem, you must already know how to make an equivalent fraction through multiplication and through division, which is also called reducing fractions. If you don't have those skills yet, click the link to go to the skill you need. If you're already strong on that, keep watching. Part finished equivalent fractions are a quick way for teachers to check how you think through an equivalent fractions problem. What you do with these problems shows teachers if you're having any difficulty and where they need to reteach and help you further. You'll get a pair of fractions like this and your job is to complete the equivalent fraction. Now you might be able to jump to the answer and you know instantly what to do, it's just natural for you. If so, fantastic, that's great for you. This film is for around half the kids in many math classes who are not sure what to do. Let me help you. To start off, let's take a fraction and an equivalent fraction. You have to work out what was done here to create this equivalent fraction. We can see the equivalent fraction has greater numbers. That tells us that the original fraction was multiplied by some number to get the new fraction. So we look at the original. Let's take the numerator. And I say to myself, 4 times what number gives me 12? If you have to, run through the 4 times table till you get to the answer of 12. And you can see 4 times 3 is 12. The top was multiplied by 3, so the bottom is multiplied by 3. 7 times 3 is 21. That's how we got the new equivalent fraction. Now, having seen that thinking demo, let's try one that needs finishing. Here's our unfinished fraction pair. We have two numerators, 7 and 35. How do we get from 7 to 35? We multiply. OK, 7 times what is 35? Run through the 7 times table until you get to 5. 7 times 5 is 35. Whatever we do to the top, we've got to do to the bottom. So 9 times 5 is 45 and we're done. All we're doing with this kind of problem is applying logic. We know that whatever we do to the bottom, we've got to do to the top. So we find out what was done on the finished part of the fraction. And then we do the same to the unfinished part. Finish the operation and we're done. Now we know this strategy, let's try another one. Here, the unfinished fraction has the smaller denominator. We're going from 33 to 11. We're reducing, so we are dividing. 33 divided by what number gives me 11? Use the 11 times table to find out. 3 11s are 33. We're dividing by 3. Do the same to the numerator then. 9 divided by 3 is 3. This is how I think through these problems and it's flawless. But you have to be able to use your times tables to do it. So if you're not strong on these, please, you need to practice. Get strong with this and then if you need to, come back for how to think your way through a problem in which the first of the two equivalent fractions is incomplete. And remember, while you are working on these exercises, you are building your math muscle.